Hello there. I'm sorry, but can someone please translate what follicle sniffing Joe Biden just said? Because that was incoherent at best. So poor old Joe just came off Zimmer Frame 1 to address the American people by taking advantage of the January the 6th Capitol demonstrations last year. And I have to say, in all my years of watching presidential and ministerial addresses, this must be the most cringeworthy I have ever had the misfortune to watch, because his visible cognitive decline is only matched by his deterioration in the opinion polls. In another piece of comedic gold, the follicle sniffer referred to Trump as former Prez of the United States of America, who he says has a bruised ego, and who wasn't prepared to accept the wool of the American people. Sounds like the old auto cue was up to its tricks again. And the only wool I see is the wool being pulled over the eyes of the US citizenry by Sleepy Joe's handlers. And if you are going to try and verbally take someone down, please make sure that you're using the same language as your audience, because the rest of the world doesn't speak Joe Biden. But Biden was not alone in jumping in mouth first. His second in command, Kamala Harris, decided to join in by comparing the events of 9-11 and Pearl Harbour to what happened one year ago in the US Capitol incident just sickening, opportunistic ramblings. But that's the Democrats for you. Now, having looked at the event myself, I have my own views on it. But according to Tucker Carlson over at Fox News, pretending that a protest was actually a failed coup is the Democrat Party's entire strategy to win this year's midterm elections. However, Republican Senator Ted Cruz said... We are approaching a solemn anniversary this week, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol, where we saw the women and men of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, risked their lives to defend the men and women who serve in this Capitol. But fellow Republican Senator Marco Rubio had a take on it that is nearer to mine. He says that the events of the 6th of January last year at the US Capitol can't be defended and can't be justified. It was a terrible day in America. But he then pointed to all the Dems and journalists that basically turned a blind eye to all the riots that went before that. Where was the outrage, Rubio asked, when 570 riots broke out across America? when over 2,300 incidents of looting were going on across this country. And he's got a solid point there. And he continued, Where was their concern for police officers and their support for law enforcement last year when over 2,000 of them were injured in the line of duty and their patrol cars were being set on fire in multiple cities? Where was their anger and their outrage and their demand for accountability when prosecutors in places like St. Louis, Portland and New York City simply refused to press charges against the people responsible for these crimes. In fact, some of them were out there raising money to bail the perpetrators out. And I remember asking the exact same questions myself. Now, if you want to take a look at St. Kamala... Just ask any one of a number of her aides who have been engaged in a fully-fledged exodus over, let's just say, a rather unpleasant working environment under the VP. How many is that now, Kamala? Seven, now that Peter Veltz has quit? Not only that, her approval ratings are going in the same direction as Biden's, down and out. But the trouble for Biden is that he's now reduced just about his entire existence to having a go at his predecessor in office and also his possible successor, Donald Trump. 
But I suppose this is the only date on which Biden can get a dig into Trump, it being the 6th of January and the anniversary of the Capitol incident. He and Harris both tried to use this anniversary to damage Trump, but a quick look round social media shows that there's no traction for it anymore. And there's a long time to go in political terms between now and the midterm elections in November, where the Dems are predicted to take a real bashing. These are the Trump-led Republican Party's elections to lose. But get this. Biden couldn't bring himself to use Trump's name. He kept referring to him as the former president. Was that out of disdain or was it because he'd forgotten the Donald's name? Is it now that bad that he can't recall the name of the man he will probably face in the US presidential elections in 2024? That is, if Biden's still in the White House come 2024 and there's a mounting doubt about that particular scenario. But for his part, Trump had no qualms about using Biden's name as he took the opportunity to lay into the current US president's failing performance, saying in a statement that Biden used my name today to try to further divide America. This political theatre is all just a distraction for the fact Biden has completely and totally failed. Not only that, Trump also said, Our country no longer has borders, has totally and completely lost control of Covid, record numbers, is no longer energy independent, inflation is rampant, our military is in chaos, and our exit or surrender from Afghanistan was perhaps the most embarrassing day in the long and distinguished history of the United States. And so much more. But maybe Trump needn't have bothered. Maybe a bit of aloofness and a bit of biding your time until the midterms, that sort of approach, might have been a better idea, while grabbing every Biden failure as you go along. And that should not be difficult considering his performance thus far. Now what on earth is going on over the Ghislaine Maxwell trial? There we were thinking it was all over bar the sentencing when up pops questions about one of the jurors, Scotty David. And we're now hearing talk about mistrials, perjury, demands from the prosecution side of all places for an inquiry into this and even talk that Maxwell could go free. And worse for the courts is that another juror who wishes to remain anonymous has also been flagged up as a possible cause to throw doubt on the Maxwell guilty verdicts. While Maxwell's lawyers have insisted that no investigation is necessary, calling instead for a new trial and claiming that the statements that both jurors have now made publicly across multiple news outlets are incontrovertible grounds for a mistrial, reports the Mail. Adding that, the admission by the jurors posed two potential issues, perjury or lying under oath and prejudice, or a preconceived opinion that may have improperly swayed the jury. Political and legal soap opera at its finest. Although given Ghislaine Maxwell's connections, who knows? Please subscribe and like this video, buy a mug and support me on Patreon or PayPal and thank you for watching.